The third verse of Psalm chapter 2 reveals the heart of human defiance against divine authority with poignant clarity. It states, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. Here the rulers and the nations not only oppose God and His anointed, but they articulate their desire to sever the ties that bind them to divine rule completely. This verse provides a vivid depiction of the rebellion's nature and the deep-seated resentment toward divine control and guidance. The use of the words bonds and cords metaphorically speaks to restrictions or constraints that are perceived as unbearable by the kings and rulers. These terms evoke images of captivity or slavery. Thus, the leader's declaration to break and cast them off suggests a profound desire for autonomy and freedom from any form of subjection to higher powers. This sentiment mirrors the universal human inclination toward independence and self-determination, but here it is directed negatively against the beneficent governance and righteous authority of God. What is particularly striking about this verse is the plural possessive there used to refer to both God and His anointed. This dual reference indicates a combined opposition to both the divine authority of God and the earthly representation of His government in His anointed King. It underscores the comprehensive scope of the rebellion, targeting not just the spiritual or celestial authority of God, but also His appointed messianic ruler who reigns on earth. This conflation of divine and messianic rule is central to understanding the psalmist's view of God's kingdom, where heavenly rule and earthly governance are inseparably linked. The rebels' desire to break and cast away these bonds and cords speaks to an aggressive rejection of any limitation or control over their actions. This attitude reflects a fundamental misunderstanding of the nature of God's laws and decrees, which are designed not as oppressive measures, but as guiding principles that promote peace, order, and well-being. The bonds and cords are meant to protect and preserve, yet they are perceived as constraints that must be destroyed. This sentiment of rejection has historical echoes in many cultures and epochs where divine laws have been viewed as hindrances to personal or national aspirations. From ancient monarchies to modern democracies, the struggle between divine commandments and human laws has often resulted in attempts to diminish religious influence on societal norms and legal frameworks. The modern secular movement can be seen as a continuation of this ancient rebellion, where divine principles are often discarded in favor of humanistic or relativistic values. Moreover, the language of breaking and casting away implies not only a desire for independence, but also an element of violence and finality in the rejection of divine rule. It suggests that the rebellion is not just a passive resistance, but an active struggle to eradicate the influence of God's authority from their lives. This aggressive stance against what is ultimately designed for their good reveals the depth of human sinfulness and confusion. In a broader spiritual context, this verse speaks to the heart of sin itself. Sin, at its core, is an attempt to live independently of God, to be one's own master, to determine one's own truth and moral compass. This desire for autonomy leads to the breaking of relationships between individuals, between humanity and creation, and most critically, between humanity and God. The tragic irony of this rebellion is that in seeking freedom from divine bonds, humanity often falls into far worse enslavements, those of sin, vice, and self-destruction. Therefore, this plea to break divine bonds is not just an ancient cry, but a contemporary one as well. It manifests in the modern world in various forms, in the rejection of moral absolutes, in the pursuit of ethical autonomy, and in the resistance to the idea of a sovereign creator who demands accountability. Each of these forms of modern rebellion echoes the ancient declaration of Psalm chapter 2 verse 3, revealing the timeless nature of human resistance to divine authority.
In reflecting on this verse, it becomes clear that the true freedom offered by God is paradoxically found in submission to His will. The bonds and cords of God are not instruments of oppression, but means of grace, designed to lead us into a fuller, more liberated life in alignment with our created purpose. The challenge for every believer, and indeed every human being, is to recognize the true nature of God's law, not as a burden, but as a blessing. This realization can transform our understanding of freedom and authority, aligning our desires with God's desires and leading us to embrace, not break, the life-giving bonds of His love and righteousness.